Hi campers, this is Darren with my RV Works. Today we're at Whis Whiskey Creek. Yeehaw! Gets a Whiskey Creek RV Park, which is just north of Joyce, Washington, which is way up on the Olympic Peninsula. And um, so what we're working on today is we're working on a Dometic refrigerator. It's one of these small ones. I think it's an RM42 something something. We'll find out in just a second. Now this one's acting very strange. The um, Remember, a refrigerator is a heating appliance, strangely enough. Yes, I did say a refrigerator is a heating appliance. And it works on the second law of thermodynamics where we're going to absorb heat from point A and transfer it to point B. And in a refrigerator we do that with pressure, gravity, ammonia, hydrogen, uh, sodium chromate, and water. We're making basically a distillery. We're going to distill some ammonia and when that ammonia wets those coils, the hydrogen touches it and it has a rapid expansion and that's where we get our cooling from in our, in our uh, refrigerator, freezer compartment. So the targets there in our freezer would be zero, of course, and in the refrigerator your target is 37 to 40 degrees, something like that. Well, this one's only a refrigerator and the... Well, let me just show you what we're seeing here. And uh, this one's going to be a little bit strange. So I'm looking forward to discovering this one together with you. Okay, so there we have our model number. It's an RM4223, uh, one of these small Dometic refrigerators, and it's only like that tall. And when I when I touch that, that's really hot to the touch. It's, it's really too hot to touch really comfortably. Well, I can't even touch it. But this side's cold, okay? So... Basically, it makes a big loop. Okay, so let me see if I can point here. So we expect this to get hot. This is the boiler, and there's a um, siphon tube inside of this section right here. And um, this is the uh, um, condenser coil. What we want to happen up in this area is we want the water to fall out, and we want to leave it with ammonia. There's going to be a, a vapor po component of the ammonia and a liquid component to the ammonia. And that's kind of what's going on in this transition. Vapor is going to go up, liquid's going to go down. And um, so this is kind of warm, which is what we want. And um, so we're trying to, the reason it's thinned is because air gets brought in here, gets transferred, and we want to run the, the air through these fins, the outside air, through the fins like a chimney and scrub the heat off of that. So one of the things I'd like to see on this application, which... I'll need to do when we're done here is we need to put a baffle right here. We want to force the air up to the up to here, okay? And we can make the baffle so it could be removed, but if the goal here is to have the the heat, or I'm sorry, if the goal is to have the air drawn in through here and go through these fins right here, well, air is kind of lazy. It's going to take this big opening right there and take a shortcut and never come off of these fins right here. So if you can't scrub the heat, you're never going to get ammonia vapor. And if you never get ammonia vapor, you're never going to be able to wet your your tubes inside the, the cat box area if you've watched my other videos. And if you can't get the ammonia vapor to wet the coils inside here, the hydrogen has nothing to to get excited about and it won't create that rapid evaporation that's going on inside of here. Um, so if all that makes sense, we do need to put a baffle here to force the air through the condenser fin. Okay, now I've got a meter here, a FLIR meter. Let's, okay, I want to make sure you can see the numbers. So I'm aiming at the bottom. You, you, could, you could see in the meter, I'm, I've, I can't point, but that orangey spot on the bottom, that's right inside there. And you can see I'm trying to aim, it, your target's like 300 degrees or something like that. So let me see if I can get it. So my point is we know the boiler's working. We see it's working, okay? And we come up here. Okay, that's 320 degrees up there. So we know that the boiler is working. It's on electric right now, but it'll also work on gas. And as we come across over to here, we, we can see that there is, if I can get the glare off for everybody here. Okay, we can see that we're, we're, we're doing okay. We're creating probably some ammonia vapor in there. Um, so we see our ammonia is, is mm, maybe cooling down, but maybe it needs to cool down some more. So if we look down without the glare we, we can we can kind of follow the heat okay i'm going to touch that with my hand it's kind of warm yeah it's kind of warm so i'm wondering but but when we get down here this is very cold okay we need that to get hot so that's what's going on here our meter here says that that's only 55 degrees there in our absorber vessel if I, there's such a glare sorry is only 70 so um 
So I'm going to say that there's a blockage of some type going on inside of this refrigerator. Uh, that blockage could be anywhere. Let me back up a little bit. You can get a better pan of everything. I've already taken my meter. I'll just tell you what I've done. I've taken my meter and I've verified that the, the, the switch works. You know, power's coming in. It's going through the switch. I've verified that the, the heating element, the, the, the heating coils are working. We verified gas. I've done all that before. So it's almost like this refrigerator has a blockage somewhere in that path. We know it's going to make it to this point right here, but by the time it gets from there to there, this is very cold down in there, but this is very hot. So it's almost like this refrigerator has a cooling unit failure um, or a blockage of some type. Typically what you expect is if it's 300 degrees here, you expect it all to kind of flow and, and do all of its magic. And, and this down here where I'm pointing is also really, really warm. Okay, not as warm as that, but definitely warm. But that's very, very, very cold right there. So therefore, we don't have that flow taking place throughout this whole thing. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here is a, a failed refrigerator. And um, what we can do is uh, look at replacing the coil or just replacing the refrigerator. But at this point, there's really nothing more we can do. And the reason why is because these, these tubings and everything are are filled with X amount of ammonia, X amount of water, X amount of sodium chromate, X amount of hydrogen, and then they pressurize everything. And so there's really no user serviceable parts there. I don't happen to have all the stuff they might have at a factory to kind of, you know, make the mix and put it in there. So um, anyway, I started the video with a strange refrigerator problem, but I kind of wanted you to discover with me the the trail of heat on this one. Um, typically, we're following the trail of something, whether it's a trail of 120 volts, 12 volts, but in this case, we're following the trail of heat. And this one, the heat is getting up to the top, but it's not making it to the bottom. Therefore, there's a blockage or a failed cooling unit. Now, <clears throat> if the unit fails, sometimes right in here, you might see some yellow powdery stuff and that's that sodium chromate ammonia and what has happened is it's found a weakness in the tubing and let's say the tubing is a round thing and it it it, it breaches and so a lot of times that happens right here in the hottest part of the boiler the right there at the um, siphon tube right in here And, and a lot of times you'll see this yellow powdery stuff down here. Now I've looked in here, I do not see the yellow powdery stuff at all. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that the sodium chromate hasn't solidified somewhere in there. Sodium chromate is a rust inhibitor. And if these refrigerators work off balance for a while, a lot of times that sodium chromate will kind of hit a low spot and just kind of solidify. And you can kind of see that angle right there. That angle, there's an angle here and there's an angle there. And that's why it's so important to run your refrigerators balanced. Um, they always say to, you know, level your RV, but it really is important when you're working with um, these refrigerators because they don't have a compressor. They only work on gravity, heat, pressure, and all these elements. So anyway, I hope all this helps. And this is Darren signing off. And happy Camper Say My RV Works. If you like these videos and you want to see more when we publish them, make sure you subscribe. And every time we publish a new video, you'll get a little, little notification. So this is Darren. Where are we at? Whiskey Creek signing off. I'll give you a quick view of Canada because, boy, I tell you, this is beautiful here. Um, and uh, so that's what I love about what I do. I get to go to some of the most beautiful places. So I, I saw a cruise ship and different container ships coming through here. But um, and if I quit talking and you listen way over there, I can I can actually hear that water lapping up on the beach there. So anyway, this is Darren signing off.